Okay, hi, uh, my name is Thomas Gustafsson and I'm uh, working for a small open source company, PrimeKey. Uh, we develop open source TKI enterprise products, EGBC, ACS, Certificate Authority, and Sign Server is a uh, uh, server side digital signature server stuff. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the whole uh, kind of chain when using smart cards. Because there is, uh, oh, okay, skip that. Uh, when you have a smart card, you don't, it's not only that well, you can have a smart card and you can use it on your PC, but there's actually, when you uh, want to use it in a bigger environment for uh, kind of serious uh, business like ele a electronic ID, etc., uh, there's a whole life cycle around it that you have to manage. And uh, this is called certificate life cycle management, so this slide, but it you might as well say a smart card life cycle management. Before, uh, because for each smart card or certificate, you first issue it to someone, uh, and then you can use it. And then when it, it will expire, then you have to renew it. Uh, if you lose it, then you have to revoke it, or you can revoke it, so it, uh, someone else can't uh, steal it and use it. And uh, in the end, it uh, expires and you throw it away and you just can't use it anymore. So those are you know, different states, uh, these certificates and smart cards. Uh, go through uh, during the time. And of course, you can uh, manage this life cycle in uh, various ways. Uh, one, you can do it manually in a small environment, uh, works fine for a small scale. Uh, of course, it's more labor intensive and uh, takes some more time, but you can easily issue hundreds of uh, electronic IDs uh, with that. And, uh, but for larger enterprises or countries, etc., you want some uh, more automated uh, lifecycle management um, in order to automate these processes, uh, etc. And then there are, there are different standard protocols that can be used to, uh, uh, to back with this uh, automated lifecycle management. So this is just. Uh, something showing that there's actually a, a very large amount of different protocols and different things that have to that interact in a PKI environment uh, where you can issue different types of certificate, different types of smart cards uh, for different purposes. You have smart card management, you have uh, LDAP directories, uh, VPN routers, web browsers, etc. So it's, uh, it's uh, actually, well, it can become, it easily becomes uh, quite complex. Uh, and that app uh, not very easy to manage at all. Uh, so for uh, we have to concentrate on the smart card uh, system. Uh, as I said, it's not only that you have a smart card and a smart card reader on your desktop. And uh, in order for it to work, uh, well, you actually have a whole chain. You have a Certificate Authority in the back end who issues certificates for your uh, PKI cards, smart cards. You have a certificate that has to be transferred somewhere, some way, uh, to the smart card, and that's called enrollment process. And uh, actually, you can use smart card on both ends of this chain. Uh, in the left end here, we have a hardware security module for a certificate authority. This can either be, you know, a 25,000 euro hardware box from SafeNet or Utimaker or something, or you can also use a smart card with OpenSC PKCS11 for this as well. Uh, and on the right side, of course, you have all the you know, thousands or millions of uh, smart cards for the users. Uh, so in the back end, the uh, hardware security module, which can be a smart card, protects the certificate for its private keys, so it can't be copied by someone who uh, breaks into the server. And this requires a, uh, also have a kind of a life cycle management for this particular token. And you have to have some sort of key ceremony to generate it in a controlled <coughs> way. Uh, because uh, uh, it's usually required that this can be audited, at least if it's like in a company or a country scale. And then uh, on the other right hand side, you have the issuance of or provisioning of the uh, users with their usable tokens, which they can actually use to do some online taxing or uh, banking or online voting or whatever. And that involves uh, to personalize uh, this uh, smart card, which comes blank, which you have received from uh, Michelle. Uh, but you have to personalize it so it actually contains your identity, your certificate. 
And uh, you can do this very fine with the uh, rule, just open and see, actually. But then uh, this is then a demonstration of a manual process which uh, contains uh, some steps that you have to do. You can get your, uh, this is uh, actually for if you have a Siemens card OS card, you can issue these commands. So you first initialize the card, you format the card, you create the PTC15 file structure on the card, uh, you can init the card with a old PTC7 slot. Uh, you can generate, then you have to generate a key pair in order to uh, have your private and public keys. And uh, after this, now you have actually a smart card with uh, keys on it. But in order to be able to use it as an ID, you also need a certificate from the certificate authority. And then you have to uh, use OpenSSL, for an example, which works with PPCS11, and you generate a certificate request on the file. And uh, you take this file and you can uh, copy and paste it into a web page on the certificate authority, and then uh, you can get a certificate from the certificate authority. And then finally, you can use uh, PKC is 15 units to store the certificate on the smart card. And now, finally, you have the uh, smart card that you can use in uh, Firefox, for instance, to do SSL uh, TLS authentication. So uh, you can easily script this you know, for a, a small business or uh, a group like this, so you can uh, issue smart cards. That wouldn't be any problem. And there are uh, also companies who uh, uh, kind of wrap this to make uh, their own uh, uh, smart card uh, personalization systems uh, to fit uh, with maybe GUIs in Python or something like that. So uh, this is the labor intensive way. Uh, in an enterprise uh, or large scale environment, this is usually not kind of uh, acceptable because they are so cheap, so they want to do everything without your <coughs> manual labor. Uh, so then they want to bring in CMS, it of course means a lot of things. In this context, the CMS is a card management system, not the content management system, not the cryptographic uh, message syntax, but it's a card management system. <coughs> and uh, so those are used by large companies to actually uh, enroll, issue, and manage this life, this life cycle that I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, it also has a lot of integration points. Then. The CMS can uh, integrate with LDAP and uh, legacy systems to uh, when you provision a user with a smart card, <coughs> it's also you know, distributed in the organization to all the systems who are the relying third parties and actually want to uh, receive this ID in the end. And there are, uh, yeah. And uh, if you have systems like this, you usually have uh, several databases. And the certificate authority has a database uh, with certificates to manage the certificate, to be able to revoke the certificate and issue revocation lists, etc. And uh, the card management system also has a database with uh, you know, ID numbers of the cards, etc. So you can keep track of uh, which person got which uh, exact uh, smart card, etc. And there, of course, I mentioned that uh, CMS, you could easily you know, base uh, use OpenSC to create your uh, card management system. It wouldn't be uh, rocket science, at least. Uh, there are plenty of uh, companies who make card management systems. This is just a few examples which we have uh, been working with uh, from some time or another. You know, Aventa, a Finnish company, AT is Dutch, Centmaker, uh, Swedish, uh, Gemalto, Overture are big ones. Uh, hard code management framework here is actually an open source uh, card management system, which is the only open source one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it uh, relies on a proprietary or commercial PPCS 11 library, uh, so it doesn't use OpenSC at least yet. Uh, so this is actually, uh, if you talk about this uh, whole uh, chain of using smart cards, uh, this is one area where there's a gap of open source software, at least to my knowledge, and this is the card management area. And uh, that was actually it. I was very fast. <laughs> so uh, I'm open for questions. And uh, of course, I uh, 
challenge you to develop a cost management system based on OpenSC. I have a question. What, what is, um, how big is the gap between PrimeKey's current products and the CMS that you would like? Uh, what PrimeKey's uh, products are, uh, PrimeKey's product is this part. Mm -hmm. So we, we completely fool this part. Mm -hmm. um, PrimeKey doesn't do anything in this part. So that's... Uh, right. what, do you what do you think is the reason why it is so? That uh, we don't do anything No, 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 they just don't do anything, uh, but that, uh, first of all, it's kind of a, a complicated and that there is no uh, open source solution. Yeah. What's the reason for this? Uh, I think that one reason, which is part of the reason why we don't do this, is uh, once you start doing this, you easily you know, kind of transition here. Uh, from where we are on the server side, it's very comfortable and nice. Uh, you deal with IT uh, stuff which are very competent, etc. When you transition here, you start getting into the real user and Windows desktops, which you <laughs> don't want to mess with, of course. It's uh, dealing with bugged cards. Exactly, and, uh, ah, exactly, and there are lots of cards. Uh, which are work uh, very differently. There are no good uh, standards for cards, which Martin of course and the, knows everything. About. And the, the, the main doorways are very bad. Yes. So do you know about the doc tag system? Uh, I think I've uh, heard the that is that was primary that was previously um, Netscape certificate system now Red Hat certificate system and it has been open source the stock tag I think right. it's it's it should be similar to what, what's happening here mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, they said they have definitely a certificate authority the dog tag that's the old uh, Netscape certificate authority but I don't think they're also not in this area yes. it's also I guess they are they are they are, they are. Yeah. okay the problem with top tag is that they're kind of uh, stuck in time, and uh, it's, it's also very limited. The car support is, I think, one or two Java cars, very specific. And as said, the, the uh, um, card issuing uh, is very often protected to be the cryptographic keys, NDAs, and very binding contracts. So it's not really an open platform. They, they kind of fulfill their needs for their you know, corporate requirements. Or something. That's it. You, you, you said earlier that it was possible to, to build an HSM on OpenSC on a smart card. But it's only to protect the, the root key. Yeah. Uh, when, when, when you mean HSM, it, is that an embedded device with a crypto disk or is this a relational database based on uh, PKCS 11 doing uh, complete uh, crypto? Yeah, just uh, uh, hardware crypto device based on PKCS 11 who performs the cryptographic uh, operations. In this case, okay, uh, so it's an HSM would just be a card reader and a smart card. Oh, yeah. But it's right that uh, the, the smart card area, which you have to deal with here, is uh, very, it has all the different vendors with uh, no uh, really open standards. Uh, yes, the Java card. It's an open standard, but it's very low level, so uh, that's why it's uh, quite complex. Yeah? So, so um, right now, so like things on the wire like we, um, are, are quite well standardized with SSL and things like that, and issuing and so on. So, so when you have a large organization, whatever else, you're running like chip cards, you're going to roll them out together with the readers and things like that. So, so a certain amount of proprietary stuff is, is kind of like almost acceptable there because yeah. if you have for thousands of people, that, that's so expensive that it has to work, you've got to have someone to blame to work, right? Because you've got so many people involved in the organization that you would never ever get through otherwise. Now, at that CMS part, that's of course a little bit different, right? Because there's so sort of like you have room for, for a standard and, and a massive benefit if, if, if like have one CMS system work with a wide range of, of cards and things like that. So if you look at OpenSC today, sort of like it covers a pretty wide range, effectively. Could you make it more, or is there a way of sort of like slicing and dicing the problem a little bit different by sort of like lobbing off the whole browser side of things and say that, well, let's, let's only focus on the, the issuing side or, or somehow 
find a way of making the issuing protocol open standard supported by open source, but let sort of like the tail and live proprietor in the browser things like that. So basically sort of like as, a, as an interim step to get to this point. Is there something pragmatic you could do there or do you have to solve the whole problem in, in, in one pass? Oh, I think you can uh, do be quite pragmatic and kind of mix and match a little bit, definitely. But where would you draw the line? Where would you sort of like, what, what problem do you solve? Like where, you, where, 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 what problem with the CMS do you really have to solve open source, open standard to get the maximum benefit? And what stuff can you leave a little bit proprietary knowing that smart cards and the rollout is really expensive? Uh, well, currently, I would say the, where you usually it are the most proprietary is uh, on the, you know, Windows clients. Uh, while the stuff in the middle can be more or less uh, uh, handled quite easily with open source uh, things. At least that's uh, my current opinion. Okay. I think time for cigarettes again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.